Yo, what is up? This is JJ from 845, and this is a Narbox 2.0 one terabyte SSD review. Narbox basically is an SSD drive that has an SD port that you can plug that in and back it up. And it also has two USB-C ports. That way you can just go ahead and back up, say, an SSD drive from my Atomos Shogun recorder onto here as well. What I do love about the Narbox right away is that the form is very small, pretty much the same size as my phone, obviously not the same as in depth, uh, but this thing is meant for travel and it delivers. This thing is pretty small, has a detachable 3000 uh, milliamps uh, battery. When I backed it up, I ended up getting two more, so that way I can back this up and not have to worry about power. The thing that I didn't like about it was its transfer speeds. So there was a shoot that we did in Portland ended up transferring, or rather I wanted to see how long it would take to transfer uh, 130 gigabytes, or rather 131 gigabytes from an SSD drive from my Sony FS5 to the Atomos Shogun recorder um, onto here. And so lo and behold, all that data took about 18 minutes. Wanted to see how long it would take with just a regular uh, transfer uh, using the eSATA to USB-C cable that I have onto my MacBook Pro, and that took only six minutes. Then I took this and uh, turned on the function for mass storage so that way the uh, MacBook Pro can recognize this as an external SSD drive. And that took only about eight minutes to transfer uh, 131 gigabytes um, onto a MacBook Pro's SSD drive. Around the 18 minute mark, uh, it actually had already backed up 100% of all the files off of this SSD drive. Again, that was 130 uh, gigabytes. Um, at the moment, it is doing a, uh, a checksum. So right now, there's 26 files, and to be exact, there's 131. Um, and look at that. It says copy failed. The part that it had said uh, failed was the checksum. So I'm going to go ahead and see real quick if 131 gigabytes was copied. And 827. Here's the MOV files. And um, this is actually a shoot with a trailblazer. So we were in Portland doing a shoot. Um, so the biggest file was 104 gigabytes. Let's see how long it takes. Oh, and there he is. Uh, I don't know if you can play here. I'm not so sure right now. The uh, video, if you can see right now, it's kind of uh, pulsing. Not so sure. This is a 48 uh, minute file, so. Not so sure what stream means either. But maybe this is a, such a big file, so let's choose a different file. Um, browsing here right now. Looks like all the files are here. The thumbnails kind of gives me um, some assurance that it's all here. So I'm going to try and see if this one could play. This one is a 493 megabyte file. And it looks like preview mode, It, if you can see it, it kind of is stuttering. It's not really a smooth playback. It's actually jumping every two seconds. So I'm wondering if uh, stream mode kind of helps with that. And I'm going to assume it's because uh, it does require a lot of processing power to play ProRes file um, even from the NAR box wirelessly through Wi-Fi onto the app. And just going to try out here because this clip is a little bit smaller at 400 megabytes. Going to try and see um, after the streaming button here finishes up loading if this thing will have a smooth playback. So it's about halfway done, but as you can see, even with a small file at 400 or around 493 megabytes, it's not going to be really good to be checking out playback uh, streaming from, from the NAR box onto your phone. I think knowingly that uh, it's there, um, not so sure why the checksum failed, uh, but I'm not going to do it again because it took uh, 18 minutes for the actual file transfer to happen. But checksum is, is supposed to um, just ensure that all the files in the file structures uh, is copied uh, essentially bit for bit. So this thing is almost done here. Let's just rewind this to the beginning and assume that once this thing finishes uploading, it'll have smoother playback. Nothing? It's 
so I'm not so sure what this is streaming to. But even going to a smaller file. So yeah, it looks like all um, files here, or playback rather, is every two seconds. Why I love devices like this, and I love tech, I love hardware, which is why I buy shit like this all the time, um, it's never gonna replace your laptop. Um, until apps, say specifically Premiere Pro and Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom, well, Lightroom's kind of there, but until those two big juggernauts kind of have a full app port to your iOS device, or I guess Android device, then sure, you could live off a device like this um, and use a USB-C uh, port and just connect it to the iOS uh, device. And I do know that connecting this to, say, your iPad Pro uh, with a USB-C is a lot faster than working off in Wi-Fi. However, if you're working on an edit, and that's what it comes down to, is that if you're working off of an edit, you kind of just might as well back up your footage or your, your data, your photos, onto your laptop. So here's my conclusion. Would you rather bring this to a shoot or would you rather bring this to a shoot? Well, obviously in terms of form, you would want to bring this. But if you're editing or if you're working during the shoot or say after the shoot or during this travel shoot, you would still be needing this. If you're a working photographer, I can recommend this as a maybe. Um, I did love how it handled uh, the files from my media format, Pentax 645Z, 51 megapixel camera. Here is um, the Narbox folder. I believe this is what I just had backed up. And boom, these are DNG files um, averaging around 64 mega. Uh, megabytes. So let's go ahead and just open up one. Let's see how fast this thing loads. This is actually a friend of mine who's a DJ. Um, who I when I grew up, he was just a kid, and now he's working for um, for Wild ninety four nine, which is a hip hop station here in San Francisco. So again, these are sixty two megabytes each. Um, just finding my exposure right here while he's checking out his phone. Uh, this is Patrick. All right, so let's just see what I can do in the browser. When you do import the images, you can go ahead and select all. And from here, this thing uh, pops up, which is open workspace. So now it's preparing the workspace. And now this is basically going to emulate um, photo mechanic. So let's go ahead and see right here. And here's our other stars. Um, Unfortunately, I go, I use uh, rejects a whole lot. And so um, unfortunately you can't really do that here, but I guess you can just uh, click one for a reject, for example. And let's see. Okay, so it looks like I was swiping and swiping doesn't work, um, but instead it would be tapping, go to the next photo. All right, so. That one's a one. I like this one. I like this one. I like that one. One, one. So I think you get the picture here. Looks like you can't pinch to zoom, which sucks. And let's just see when I go back. And you see all of these things here. It has a pending metadata actions. Let's go ahead and save it all. Saving pending data, uh, save pending metadata. Would you like to apply it to existing files or, or duplicate it to a new location? I'll go ahead and apply it to existing. And that was pretty quick. So now you can see here that it does save the ratings that I had just earlier. And the Selects app did a really good job as far as going through those photos quickly um, and, be, and being able to uh, tag metadata on it. While I did like how it has a uh, photo mechanic built in, I don't know, it's part of his uh, algorithm to, to be able to preview the images quickly. Um, I didn't like how I didn't have the usual stuff that I use. I'm a reject and color label type of guy. The app only has uh, tags and then also a star rating system. So for me, I think the quickest way that I can adapt my workflow is one is for rejects and then five is like my selects. If you're a working videographer or cinematographer, I can't really recommend this. Um, it has some really cool features to kind of entice you, especially with 
uh, transcoding to ProRes and also creating proxy files. But just doing one test or doing one test on a, uh, converting a 300 megabit file, of an MP4, to a ProRes took way too long just for one file. And that was like seven seconds. Um, so can't really see the need to use this device if you want to set proxy files. Um, honestly, I was just, after packing up from a shoot, if I'm at home or at a hotel room, I would just do a batch edit um, and convert the files into proxies or ProRes if I really needed it. The only reason that I can maybe see to recommend this for a working videographer or cinematographer is if, again, if you're working with other uh, videographers and you don't own the cameras and eventually you're gonna have all that data back to you because you're gonna be editing it. But I say maybe only because if that is the case, then you might as well bring your laptop, bring a hub, or give them your SD card um, for them to record on because most cameras do have dual SD card slots. Uh, they can do it, or if they're recording on uh, an SSD drive anyways, say with a Shogun monitor, um, you can just transfer that much, much quicker onto your laptop with USB-C directly or using a hub or USB 3.0. So I'll be holding on to this only because there's actually a couple of apps that I was really looking forward to be using, and that was relating to video, um, and they kind of advertised that during their Kickstarter uh, launch. So it's not available yet. So. I'll see how that goes, um, but for the meantime, if anyone is out there looking to get a Narbox 2.0 one terabyte SSD drive for their backup and mobile solutions, um, give me your best offer. Hopefully this review answers some questions, saves some time, and maybe save your money. Um, this was my first time being on camera, so let me know how I did. But if you have any questions on a Narbox, feel free to leave them below. Um, any comments, I'll get back to them.